Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Teresa Carlson. It is great to be in Cartagena, Colombia. It's my first trip here. Beautiful location. I got to go to Bogota, where you had very mild weather, to here, where it's very hot and humid, a little bit more like where I live in the Washington, D.C. area. So we're going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about Amazon Web Services and cloud computing. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see if they can get us rolling here to get our slides moving for just a moment. Ah, there you go. The USB needs to be uh, added in. So let's do, let's do that. That'll help. All right, here we go. So who's familiar with Amazon Web Services? Has anyone here heard of Amazon? Okay, a few, a few. But hopefully after this presentation, you'll know just a little bit more about what Amazon Web Services is. So Amazon Web Services is a cloud computing platform that provides very scalable, very flexible and cost-effective infrastructure for businesses, organizations, and governments around the world. We are the largest provider of cloud computing uh, in the world. We are the pioneer of cloud computing, but we didn't call it cloud in the beginning. We called it web services. So when we started this business in 2006, there was really no such thing as cloud computing. So we've ended up having about a five-year head start on cloud computing in terms of the services that we've been able to provide. But uh, the cool thing is that when you fast forward today, cloud has actually become the new normal. I started our public sector business for Amazon Web Services almost five years ago now. And when I started it, and I would go in and talk to organizations, large enterprises, government entities, they really didn't understand what cloud computing could do to really create an atmosphere in their uh, environment and enterprise to really move forward their mission. So let me go through, for those of you who are not as familiar with Amazon Web Services, some of the basics. So what is cloud computing? It is on-demand delivery of IT resources, where you literally pay as you go. And there's six key areas that are sort of business imperatives when Amazon talks about cloud computing that we really believe if you don't have these elements of cloud computing, it's not really cloud. And as one is, you should have no upfront capital cost. Two is, it should be low cost. And you'll see that, I'll talk to you a little bit later about, we continue to reduce our prices uh, over and over again under no market pressures. You should only pay for what you use. Can you imagine IT only paying for what you use? self-service infrastructure that you can provision yourself on demand for the resources that you need when you need them in real time. The ability to scale up super fast to provision and scale your resources. And then lastly, your time to market. That your time to market goes much faster and you can scale globally very fast. So, I wanted to share a little bit about the public sector market. There are two areas when we talk about public sector that we say we work with our customers on doing two major areas. And one is paving the way for disruptive innovation. And the second is making the world a better place. And it's one of the things I love about the mission of all my customers is that those two really do go hand in hand. And we are working very closely with them because they all want innovation. And many times they spend 80% of their budgets and also commercial enterprises on maintaining the, the tools that they have and not really innovating. And what does, what does AWS and cloud computing actually offer when it comes to paving the way for disruptive innovation? Well, it offers true agility the ability to move really fast when you're trying to get something done and not wait for weeks and months. 21st century job skills, because today you can't separate business from mission. And you need to have the right skills to move into the 21st century. And IT is not the same as it was. 
cloud computing is a way of doing business today and you want to have those right skills in your organization. And then lastly is cost savings. Our customers really are looking for saving costs, not because they want to do less IT, but they want to do more things with their IT because if you can name one thing today that doesn't touch IT in a business, I'd be shocked because pretty much everything is dependent on some type of IT resource. And you want to be able to enable that business and uh, mission for your organization in the right way. So what about making the world a better place? My customers constantly are considering the things that they're doing for making the world a better place. From fighting cancer, to developing new drugs, to finding energy, new uh, sources of energy, to uh, mapping genomics and looking at a world map of Landsat for geospatial resources that can be utilized to looking at how you fight a war and understanding a blast, a blast radius of a bomb that just went off. So there's a lot of world changing projects that are going on and cloud computing is the perfect thing to enable those. To again, to be able to scale, move, analyze, look at the data and do amazing things. Economic development, what I'm gonna show you here in a minute is that we believe 70 to 80% of all startups utilize Amazon Web Services to start their business up. And why do they do that? Because they can scale fast and they have no upfront capital cost. And that is the way that you wanna drive a business. You don't wanna to have to have a big capital outlay and then pray and hope, which is not a strategy, that it's actually gonna work. So when you're creating economic development, think about the number of jobs that have been created from new companies. And I think was Uber here before me? So Uber is also uh, a company that runs on cloud and look at, they've disrupted an industry. So literally the ability to use new tech tools is actually disrupting in industries like Uber, Airbnb, Tinder, if you're looking to date differently as an example. Uh, so there's just all kinds of things that are happening as a result of the ability to use IT in, in major and differing ways. And then the other one is citizen services engagement. I love that. Who as a citizen doesn't want access rapidly to their uh, health facilities, their educational facilities, knowing what uh, parks are available to them? How do you get childcare? The ability to actually do great things in cities and countries through the use of cloud technologies. And then research and education. Research has completely changed as a result of cloud. And I, I get to talk to amazing researchers around the world today that talk to me about their cycle times being reduced. Literally from three years to a year, to three months, to three days. If you think about just the ability to do things like mapping a genome, which at one point we thought was gonna take us about 50 years, you can do in minutes now. So it's those kinds of things. It's not just mapping, but it's the ability to analyze and do great things. So speed is not just for startups today. Enterprises can have speed. Governments, educational institutions, not-for-profits who want to put their money toward their mission and not toward IT. But you can move faster than ever now than you ever dreamed with, with your IT services. Uh, so when I talked about all those startups, what we talk about every day with our government customers who are the enterprises or of enterprises is they can also act and behave as a startup does with the agility of their IT resources. Because in the old days, the old days, because we talk about the old days, we're in the new world. So we talk about the old days and the old world. You would spend millions of dollars on expensive IT, inflexible, slow moving, frozen in time resources that you couldn't update, you couldn't manage in the right way, you had to wait till you had more budget, or you hoped that those were what you actually needed when you bought them. Think about that. Buying something, thinking you made the right choice, you get it, and it's like, it's not what I needed. You don't have to do that anymore because you can move into the new world. So. Today, with the use of AWS and cloud computing, you can actually try things out in small ways. Most of the things we offer, we offer in free tiers, so you can even try it and make sure that you can utilize it effectively before you buy a bunch. And then you can change resourcing if what you bought and purchased 
is not working for what the right application is. Because as you know, one size does not fit all. You have to be able to run different infrastructure instances, you need different storage types, and you need different databases uh, contingent on what is the application that you're actually running and building. So what are some of the things that customers are utilizing getting out of the gate for with AWS? And I can tell you, it's, it's amazing. I mean, my customers educate me every day. I've met with some amazing customers here in Columbia. And you guys educate me every day on what you're doing with your mission and your applications. But some that we've really seen our customers get going on pretty fast are things like web hosting and websites. It's an easy way to get started with cloud, moving those and provisioning those resources and really reducing your costs, but having very rich resourcing and tooling that you need to drive those websites. The other one is development and testing. Many of our customers use cloud computing for their dev and test because again, they don't want to over provision and they can utilize a rich array of resources for development and testing based on what they're trying to do in their enterprise storage, backup, and archiving. Storage now has, gone, has gotten so inexpensive. We have something called Glacier that's a penny a gig a month, and it's for cold storage. But if you think about the cost of storage is being dramatically reduced, and we often see customers overbuying with storage because they're not sure what they need, so they just overbuy instead of looking at the real uh, types of storage that are needed for their application. Disaster recovery. I have a lot of uh, enterprises and government customers say, I don't, I don't have a DR because I can't afford it. Well, we want to make sure you afford it when it comes to cloud because it's an important opportunity. Big data and high performance computing, web mobile apps, enterprise apps, to everything to major data center migrations. So again, what we see uh, on a regular basis and talk to our customers about is their they utilized infrastructure in a way that they would wait weeks and months to provision something. Because if you think about the acquisition cycle in, a, in governments and a lot of enterprises, it's a very long cycle time. And you could be waiting to get your application up and running because you're trying to get the resources actually purchased and then provision those. Well, what you do with AWS, literally in minutes, you can add new development sites. You can add new production environments. You can add 1,000 servers, 2,000 servers. You can remove 1,000 servers. You can put in a petabyte of storage and utilize a petabyte of storage plus for all your research or your data analytics. So that takes you literally to a new level of transforming your operations and having a new uh, model for agility and what you're trying to achieve with your business. Now let's talk about security for a minute. You cannot settle for any cloud provider that is not meeting your security and compliance needs. And it's, and it, believe it or not, it's become the major reason that people are actually moving to the cloud. In the beginning, uh, when I, when, you know, my team, we would go out and we would talk to government agencies and enterprises about Amazon Web Services, the first thing they wanted to talk about was security. And they still want to talk about security, and they should want to talk about security, because it's extremely important to us, and it's got to be extremely important to you. But believe it or not, there's a, there's a new level of confidence with cloud computing now. As we've seen our customers get experience, there's a new level of confidence. So really, what we spend a lot of time on now, believe it or not, is how do we, how do we acquire you? They're like, how do we acquire you? Because if you're in a model where, you were, where you're uh, used to doing a capital expenditure, and all of a sudden you move to uh, operations expense, a lot of our customers have not really understood how they make that transitional shift from CapEx to OpEx. So we spend time working with them a lot on actually how they acquire uh, the cloud. So let's talk about security and compliance. We have been a pioneer and a leader not only in cloud, but in the security and compliance space of cloud. We've actually helped many countries and companies set their cloud security models up. We started in the US helping create something called FedRAMP with the US government because they had a sort of an outdated version of how they did security called FISMA. 
So we were the first to achieve uh, the signature for FedRAMP, which then turned into Department of Defense, creating more controls, which we were the first to pass that. And then we worked with the intelligence community. Now we've gone to Australia, and we've, we've met both IRAP uh, for Australia and Singapore. We now have worked with the UK government. We have worked um, with, along with that, doing HIPAA for healthcare. We're working uh, with CEGIS for justice and public safety applications, FERPA for education, uh, on and on and on. So we have said we will not just meet, but we will exceed the security and compliance bar when it comes to our customers. So we're very proud of that. And not only are we just achieving those, we're providing tooling to you all as an end customer to have those opportunities through new solutions and service offerings like CloudTrail and AWS Config, which you can do call logging and actually analyze all the logs and reviews and alarming that actually assesses uh, your security. And what's interesting about CloudTrail, we launched it for, uh, we thought it would be good for security, but we launched it for some other things and our customers all came to us and said, this is awesome tool for security. And we've, we've launched new encryption uh, tools and methodologies, and you'll see us continue to launch tons of new services and features around security, in addition just to building in a secure infrastructure and tools on top of that for our customers. So one of the things I wanted to point out that I think is really cool about something we do is that our customers and our partners get the economies of scale from what we do. So when we build infrastructure out and we add these new security tools, we don't just add them to one data center, we add them to our worldwide fleet. So we make sure that everything we do is added to a fleet. So when one customer pushes us to go do something from a compliance perspective, we literally make that available to all customers and partners. So when our partners get ready to create their applications, on top of AWS and they want to go through a security regime that some country offers or some organization, they automatically uh, move much more quickly because they've inherited all those controls. So they just have to worry about the application level because we have a, a shared security model. But these are some great examples of how, again, when we meet a requirement, all the others take advantage of that requirement, which is, which is really, really, uh, a great model and you get uh, innovation on behalf of us and our other customers. So how are enterprises, government and education institutions working with cloud today? Well, here's an example, I call it called this the NASCAR slide. There's many, many more. But in the early days, we had people telling us that enterprises and government organizations would never use Amazon Web Services. They said, they won't use it, they'll be scared of it, it won't be secure enough. Well, fast forward, and like I said, cloud computing is the new normal. And you have companies like, I think Easy Taxi is one that you all hear, have here as an example that runs on Amazon Web Services. Netflix, I don't know if you guys use Netflix here locally, to everything from Sharp to Samsung to Expedia to Unilever, Dow Jones to many, many uh, customers now globally has pretty much gone all in on cloud computing. Government agencies, uh, you'll recognize some here uh, that are local to uh, Colombia, uh, to many, many around the world, uh, US, Australia, Singapore, Japan, uh, the EU, so on and on, very cool. I could just go on and on about the, the case studies here of what customers are actually doing to drive their business. And then there, there are three programs, really four, that I wanted to point out to you today, something that we really try to do to empower and enable our customers. We have a research grants program where we've given million of, millions of dollars to research organizations to help further what they're doing uh, in mission running on AWS. So um, this is very cool. We have tons of case studies about this. So if you get a chance to go up to Amazon Web Services, our website and take a look, just great case studies around research, amazing researchers around the world. 
Um, we also have a program for open data sets where we host open data sets free of charge. So again, if you, there was a program at the National Institutes of Health called the, the Thousand Genomes Project. And when I first started this business, people said, we, we need access to these data sets. Well, if you wanted to go get access to the thousand genomes as a researcher, you had to have a lot of money in big data centers. And so I went to NIH and we said, we want to move, do a duplicate copy of the thousand genomes on Amazon Web Services. So we paid at our own nickel to move that over and then it was crazy, the first week that we had that data set up, we had 3,400 new researchers crowdsource on that data set, just the first week alone. And now there's been hundreds of research papers written on that because it gave and empowered the individual researcher to the local college, to the university, the ability to take advantage of that research. Now we have major programs up like the National Cancer Institute's database, we have autism database, we have the Landsat database. So we continue to add more and more data sets so our customers have uh, access to them free. So you don't have to go build your own data center, put your data sets. So if you have good data sets that you think the world would use, talk to me. We'll make sure that we get them up there. We also put a scientific computing team together because what we found is some of the most amazing science projects were going on, but they needed support to understand how cloud could be game changing and move their projects forward much more rapidly. And this team has been dedicated to the world's um, science projects that are out there that we really think could make amazing changes, uh, world changing efforts like the Square Kilometer Array as an example that's going to be the largest satellite in the world when it gets completed. We also have a program called AWS Educate where we're providing free credits and tools for university professors uh, and students so that they can take advantage of how do you learn cloud computing? How do you learn true cloud computing? We're gonna help train and certify them and then hopefully help them get jobs so that they can have new 21st century skills because it's one of the big things that I get asked about when I travel around the world which is how can you help us get the skill sets that we really need to be successful? Because cloud is new, but it's growing very rapidly. So the IT skills that are required, we need more of them. Next year, you'll see us launch more and more tools to help support this global program, which we're really proud of. And we're hoping that it uh, really moves forward the environment for computer scientists and developers and engineers for cloud. There's six quick strategies I want to walk you through uh, on how people are thinking about their use of cloud. So one is a, for development and test environments, which we talked about. And there's, uh, these are three quick case studies, but I'll, I'll talk to the one on the far right, which is code.org. This is one of my favorite not-for-profit organizations. They're based out of Seattle, Washington, and their goal in life is to teach students how to code. And they do something called an hour of code every year. And we run uh, the hour of code on Amazon Web Services. And for that hour, and it goes on for weeks, but it's an hour in a certain area, uh, children go online and they learn how to code. And they write their stories up and they share. And it's really crazy. Here you can see uh, more than 18 million youth coders this past time and over 330,000 con concurrent users. So I really love that to other things like you know, Tokyo Stock Exchange running their Oracle Enterprise applications uh, to reduce their test, uh, their cost for their test environment. Because again, we hear a lot of customers saying, we're spending way too much money on test and dev environments. The second one is just building new apps in the cloud. You know, pretty much what I see customers pause on, on how they move are these large monolithic older outdated applications because they're trying to figure out can we get them to the cloud but what they don't pause on is building new apps in the cloud because they go very fast and they move very fast and one I'll point out on the bottom which is a favorite of mine is the AMP lab at Berkeley University and they are a genomics and cancer research center that we we're talking about and they have been on a quest to map 
every cancer type the genome strands. And they're looking for similarities in those strands and what drug interactions occur to understand can one drug for one type of cancer help with another type of cancer. And they are very bold in their belief and they say that because of cloud computing that they believe in the next 25 to 30 years that we will all live with most types of cancers chronically versus terminally because of the knowledge that we're learning. So it's very cool. There's a couple of great case studies on AWS if you're interested in learning more. The other one that's sort of a cool one is massive online learning with a company called Coursera. And Coursera has grown really rapidly and they basically offer these MOOCs or massive online course curriculums which is great because it allows students around the world to take courses that they may never have access to and can even interact with other students in other parts of the world. Strategy three is using the cloud to, impr to improve their current on-premise apps. So again, sort of the hybrid model of taking applications that you're already running and then taking advantage of the AWS tools to help scale those, enhance those, and really enable them in a more modern and scalable and agile fashion. And then also um, using the cloud to improve your on-prem apps through things like FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, where they're mining social media and looking for warnings of uh, where individuals say, I had an interaction with this drug or this food, something's going on. And a lot of times, believe it or not, when you talk to a lot of the health agencies, they say that one of their biggest resources of data are social media. So the ability to mine that information and then share it very fast around the world. To everything, we have a partner called TradeWorks that looks at big data. They're doing massive crunching of data for um, stock, trading, uh, stock trading based on the flash crash that we had in the U.S. And about six years ago. And they literally look and tick tock real time every, uh, every transaction that's occurring to see if there's a possible interaction that could happen for another crash that could happen in the market. So they're constantly uh, reviewing that. Also using cloud apps that integrate with your on-prem. Uh, and NASA Jet Propulsion Lab was one of our very early customers at AWS. And they are doing amazing things with their scientists. They, they are doing streaming of the Mars rover and Mars Curiosity so that, and they're taking current data that they have and blending those because they already had some in their, in their on-prem. And now they blend those two and get it out to the world so that again, researchers have access. And, are, and there's all kinds of findings that have occurred from this streaming based on customers having access to this technology and uh, all the feeds that are coming down. And then migrating your existing apps to the cloud. This is done every day. We know so much more about lifting and shifting applications, which is pretty cool because it's gotten so much easier, the, the ability to lift your applications from your data centers onto the cloud, and then the ability to cloud optimize those really, really fast. And we have, comp we have groups like uh, the public broad cast system to state of Arizona that have migrated almost all their major apps and reduced both processing and error rates. They've improved their testing. So the stories go on and on about what our customers are literally learning. Two, we have customers, hundreds, thousands now that are all in on AWS in the cloud, like the National Democratic Institute, which goes around the world to ensure that there's fair and, um, and there's fair and ethical elections going on. To also universities that are saying, we need to provide better services to our students more rapidly, and we don't need to be having data centers that don't really help us with undifferentiated kinds of things. We need to focus on our mission, which is education, not, not building data centers. So two quick things uh, as I wind down. We just announced and have been running our second annual City on a Cloud contest. So if you're interested, go up and take a look on AWS. Uh, we, did, we launched our first one last year because I really believe that major innovations are going to happen in cities. There's such an opportunity now with cloud. And with 
this with the winners we'll announce them in October this year and we had a winner from Latin America last year actually right Jeff we had one winner from Latin America but the the what we get for submissions are amazing and it's really about helping your cities do great things so we'd love for you guys to think about it if you didn't do it this year we'd love for you to uh, jump in and show us what applications you built because we give hundreds of thousands of dollars in credits and marketing to the companies that do this or agencies that do this so get involved and tell us about what's happening on City in a Cloud and the second thing I want to talk about was I told you about our AWS Educate program so the other thing is I'm doing something called hashtag smart is beautiful and I'm trying to get all the women engaged around the world to help get more young girls excited about technology because we have so few women in the tech sector and there's thousands of jobs out there. So I met with an amazing group of women yesterday from Columbia for a luncheon. We had a great time. We talked about ways that we could push this forward in Columbia and I, want, I hope they'll keep it going. Uh, our partner uh, supported us on this, Avoxo. I really want to thank them for hosting the luncheon and really supporting us here because, um, look, there are so many amazing jobs in tech and we need women in those jobs as well, but it starts at a very young age. So this is a really easy concept. It's about going out, participating in your schools, doing a small coding camp, going into your children's classroom, talking about what STEM kinds of programs are and if you do something fun and exciting you just hashtag smart is beautiful you put it on Twitter Instagram Pinterest LinkedIn whatever is your social media thing and then you can look and find all the amazing things going on around the world with amazing women and men that are getting involved so I hope you guys will get involved too and tomorrow, if you're still here, we're going to have it from 7 to 9, a breakout session on AWS. We'd love to support your business and mission needs. And just three quick final thoughts about Amazon that's a little different about us that you won't see in most tech companies. One, we are absolutely customer obsessed. Customers are our number one priority. And 90% of everything we build comes from customer requests and we innovate on behalf of you, and I love that. We've reduced our prices 49 times because we want to make sure that you have access to services as you need them. We're inventors. We hire inventors. We like disruptors. So if you looked inside who we are, we hire these amazing, smart people that want to innovate on your behalf. And last, we have a long-term view of things, so there's no short term for us. We want to make sure you're successful, with your business and your mission for the long term. So we don't want to work with you in a short term. We want to see you be really successful with cloud. And we really strive to provide a platform that is better, faster, cheaper, with security by design to really help you with your mission and your world objectives. So thank you so much. I am so honored to be here in Columbia. It's fun. This is the first time I've ever been to this conference. So if you want to know more about AWS, let us know. So thank you again. Have a good rest of the day.